evening. I'm going to go ahead and call tonight's uh, regular school board meeting from Monday, April 25th to order. Please rise for a moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Changes. I know we have a comment card board members on 8.05, so we're going to pull 8.05 for discussion. Are there any other changes, additions, deletions to the amendment, Superintendent Bullard? Okay, so approval of the minutes. Superintendent, I recommend approval of the minutes from the regular school board meeting April 11th, 2022, and executive session for IT security purposes April 11th, 2022. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Perfect. Okay, we are on our representation. So I believe we have representatives here from Umatilla Middle School. Um, I would like to go ahead and invite you guys forward. I'm not sure of the order of the presentation, but we're excited to have some students here and hear about what you guys are doing. Come on up. Good evening, and thank you for allowing us to share with you. My name is Tiffany Sheckler. I'm a mental health liaison at Umatilla Middle School, and I facilitate SWAT club meetings at um, Umatilla. We have two students here with us, Mirabella Thames and Trevor Shell. I want to make sure I pronounce that right, and Miss McDonald, Sarah McDonald from Sipcom. Um, so tonight we're going to go over what SWAT is and the students' goals and outcomes. SWAT stands for Students Working Against Tobacco. It is Florida statewide youth organization to mobilize, educate, and equip Florida youth to revolt, to revolt against and de-glamorize de big tobacco. SWAT is a united movement and empowered youth working toward a tobacco-free future. During the 2021 and 2022 year school or school year, Umatilla Middle School has hosted the first SWAT club in Lake County School and Lake County. Umatilla Middle School has served as a pilot program and has consistently had nine to twelve students in every weekly meeting. Oh. UMS SWAT youth have developed goals for their upcoming 22 to 20 through 23 school year. They are to increase SWAT clubs, help foster a safer environment to talk about vaping, increase education on vaping and its impact on the body and on the families, and to conduct outreach along with local municipalities to advocate for smoking free parks and beaches. Garnering the school board's support would allow our Lake County SWAT youth to move forward with fortitude and assurance to increase their school and community exposure and activities, therefore making a larger impact among their peers, family, and neighbors in the 22 through 23 school year. Thank you for this time to allow us to share with you and the, the wonderful things our UMS SWAT youth are doing. And with your support, we hope to continue this work in additional schools next year. Great job. Thank you. Um, you were handed some folders and in there is um, our newsletter that we did and some activities that um, we had with the students this year. Very well done. Yes, that's awesome. Thank you, both of you for coming and thank you, Mrs. Sheckler, for leading this organization as well. Maybe you have some community partners that have come and, and taken advantage of it as well. Um, and, and your proud principal is here in the audience to support you as well. So we are super excited. This board loves to see our students. And so thank you for bringing them forward to talk about what SWAT has been doing. Thank you. <laughs> Next, I believe Ms. Pearson is coming up for our procl proclamation on Mental Health Awareness Month. Follow up. Good evening. 
before you this proclamation to consider signing. Mental Health Awareness Month is May 2022. Whereas mental health is essential to everyone's overall health and well-being, and whereas all Americans face challenges in life that can bring impact that can impact their mental health, especially during a pandemic, and whereas prevention is an effective way to reduce the burden of mental health conditions, and whereas there are practical tools that all people can use to improve their mental health and increase resiliency, and whereas mental health conditions are real and prevalent in our nation, and whereas with effective treatment, those those individuals with mental health conditions can recover and lead full productive lives. And whereas each business, school, government agency, healthcare provider, organization, and citizens share the burden of mental health problems and has a responsibility to promote mental health wellness and support prevention and treatment efforts. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the School Board of Lake County does hereby proclaim May 2022 as Mental Health Awareness Month in all the public schools of Lake County and call upon school administrators, teachers, students, and citizens of Lake County to commit to increase awareness and understanding of mental health, the steps our citizens can take to protect their mental health, and the need for appropriate and accessible services for all people with mental health conditions. Thank Amen. you so much. Hold on. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I recommend that you adopt the proclamation of Mental Health Awareness Month of May 2022. So moved. Second. Aye. Aye. We are at the public input portion of our meeting. I have um, first Ms. Cronin. Good evening, superintendent and board members. I'm glad to be standing here tonight knowing that we're looking at a different avenue to help our custodians out. Um, you know, last time I was here, I talked about having an in-house sub list. Um, we have a lot of employees that don't work during the summer. They are already out looking for jobs to work during the summer. Bus drivers will be bidding on jobs um, the second week in May for summer work. I'm not really sure how much summer work they're going to have this year. But we lose a lot of employees because during the summer they go find a different job to make ends meet. And they end up liking that job and staying there. You know, if we're that short of custodial, I think, you know, whether we have the sub list up and ready by then or we, you know, hire some custodians for the summer to help with, you know, with the crews that, that are shorthanded. Um, you know, I, I know that the $15 an hour, whenever that gets signed and we can say it's going to happen, um, I know that will help with custodial staff. I'm not sure it's going to help with much other, but I think that's going to help with the custodial staff. And I think that um, maybe offering some open positions for summer work may help your cafeteria workers, um, bus drivers and monitors, and even custodians that don't work eight hours a day. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Cronin. Okay, next we have Denko Bryant. Um, I saw some of you double checking the agenda. No, I am not giving a report tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, board members, superintendent. So I know I wear a lot of hats, but tonight I'm here as private citizen Denko, as I like to call him. And I want to say <laughs> to Ms. Burns, thank you so much for your service over these past six years. I know that tonight is your last meeting. And I just want to say thank you and good luck as you move forward. Thank That's you. Good. That was very kind of you. That was very kind of you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I believe we are on the attorney report, Mr. Johnson. Yes, ma'am. Um, we have been uh, discussing the changes in the adapt ad adoption of the new 15-year charter contracts with Mineola mascot and spring creek and we would with your permission like to put them on the next regular board meeting agenda for approval Great. okay we will we'll do that and uh just so you know there were two other charters as well that came up in this cycle for amendment um lake um, tech and ali and both of those will probably be in a position to be put on the agenda in a three or four weeks. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. You're on the consent agenda. All right. I recommend approval of consent agenda items 8.01 to 8.04. 
and 9.01 to 10.08. Board members? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. So we'll come back to 8.05 and Mr. Yoakum. You will kick us off. Good luck to you, Christy. Uh, I hope that you enjoy your re repass of not having to get emails from me, among other people. Um, as uh, I believe I sent emails to a number of you about uh, this issue of 8.05, the Edge Annuity Review. Um, and I just was looking at that, and it's $405,000 to renew a software contract for software where there really wasn't a lot. And I know it's come up before, you probably all know exactly what it does, but not everybody out there does. And it didn't really explain what it was for and why we should renew it for $415,000. Um, then I started thinking, I just recently bought a, uh, another truck. I got rid of my old green Jeep. And uh, so nobody recognizes me anymore. Um, and I went through a lot of research to determine the model that I wanted and then which, where to find, because it was a used vehicle that I was buying. And, um, and then I looked at this and I said, you know, do you guys ever review online reviews of the software that you're buying for hundreds of thousands of dollars? So I just went out and I just typed in Edgenuity Review. And there was two major ones. I think I included a link to one and it listed the other one. And both of them showed that Edgenuity had about 2.5 out of five. And then if you search on Edgenuity alternatives, you'll find articles that list 10 or 15 alternatives to Edgenuity. And then questions like, why does everybody hate Edgenuity? Okay. Now I realize that from something I read is that Maybe some of the issues are that you had to use it during COVID and that maybe it wasn't designed to do all the things that, that people liked. And so maybe that's what part of this was. But then the question is, perhaps your purchasing process and your renewal process should include a mandatory review of online reviews of software. Because I know right where I can go to review business software and you'll find hundreds of people posting reviews about their use of it and everything else. And I would suspect that maybe uh, Education Week or some other places have reviews of the products that you're buying. And I think that you ought to look at that. The purchasing department should look at that. The academics department should look at that. And uh, I sent a copy of this to them too because I didn't want to be accused of not letting them know. <laughs> uh, the, uh, and, and just look at that before you make these decisions to either buy or to renew software because now there's a lot of stuff out there and you can go through and you can weed out, you know, the BS or the pro sales hype. But after listening to that, I wonder whether there was really good salesman that sold you guys Edgenuity or they, you got in early, whatever it was, and then they didn't keep up with uh, their standards. And of course, I hope that I get some comments to explain the other side of the story. Thanks. Did you mind if I do any? So with the other side of the story, uh, Mr. Weeks, I know is, is, um, is going to speak to it. And then Ms. Pearson, if you have any, if there's any other questions about um, the academic, the intervention use of it, um, she's happy to provide some information as well. well. I can confess that the Edgenuity salesman is not that good, actually, to be <laughs> honest with you. So I'll go ahead and go there first. So I think um, one thing that we can look at whenever we look at a s software um, let's look at the intent and then let's look at some metrics that I think matter, um, maybe a little bit more than online reviews, because online reviews have people who have different needs. It's not that the reviews themselves are bad, it's just that people are using things for different products. So Edgenuity right now, in the beginning of the pandemic, kind of got its claim to fame in the fact that in that one quarter, that last quarter, that we used it as a way to continue some form of education and instruction during an almost untenable time. However, in the year past, that's not really what it was for. It was more to address learning loss. And specifically, what we were concerned about is kids that may have fallen behind. And so on the next slide, I've got a couple of statistics for this year. And I know it says a quick story and coming from me. I know that sometimes is a shock, but it will actually be relatively quick because I think this metric does say a lot that the review necessarily doesn't. So right now in the 21-22 school year, 1,863 courses have already been completed. And this is over a gamut of middle schools and high schools. And so you have to think about that. That translates into students that were behind 
in their program of study or their progression. And so this was an attempt to, and relatively dramatically, catch them up. 689, one thing that Edgenuity does is it will go ahead and project whether you're on course to finish for this year. And of course, we just have a little bit of a snippet of the end of the year right now. But right now, if those metrics were to make, that would be an additional 689 courses. So what we did is we look at 2,552 courses. Now, obviously, graduation and the learning loss could have affected very several grades. But right now, this year, we would be looking at our seniors, right? And the seniors, there are 1,050 courses that were completed by seniors for this school year specifically. So these are students without this alternative may not have been able to May, may not have been able to graduate. Now, I will say this, there are other options. However, there are not a whole lot of other options that the state of Florida will allow you to substitute for credit recovery. One of the options, and a vendor, which I prefer just not to name, we went away from and went to Edgenuity and Lake Virtual. So that's probably the other big one. Um, the other one is possibly sending our kids to Florida Virtual. However, we ran a quick calculation. If we just looked at approximately with some recalibration, um, what that would look like, it would be about a million dollars if they all went to Florida Virtual instead. So I think even though the metrics on the online piece, I think some of there is a little bit of a swirl potentially of, you know, a lot of districts whenever they rolled out in response to the pandemic. I know we had a couple of challenges, but we really did roll out relatively smoothly. So I think there's some language about that. And then I think there's also potentially um, some people, I saw some language about homeschool, but that would be difficult. We have a whole machine of rostering and single sign-on that helps with that. And so I don't know if Ms. Pearson wanted to speak to the instructional piece, because I think there's a part there as well. Mr. Weeks has pretty much covered everything with his slide. Um, I do know that if we did not have this option, we would be leaving a lot of students behind. It does provide an option, an alternative for students to recover a course, to um, be able to make a, forgive a grade. And without that, we may not have the teachers that for all of these courses to be able to work one-on-one -on -one with students. So this does give an opportunity for those students to get that option. And it also, in some cases, is the um, teacher for that particular course, depending upon where students might be in alternative placements or DJJ facilities, but still under our care. So hopefully that has answered any additional questions. Oh, and it's also, as he said, it's approved. So we've only used approved courses from the state of Florida. This is um, one of the companies. We'd like to speak about the process for just half a second, though. One thing that I think is important is, is that the bill actually came down from 500 and something thousand dollars last year. We are constantly reviewing and trying to use usage reports and things like that to guide. We've cut some core systems where there are modules we weren't using, and this is a situation where we nipped and tuck where we didn't find the courses to be as effective or so. We tried to adjust. And so that review process does happen internal, and we do include stakeholders. We just don't have a formal process. Those tend to be a little bu bureaucratic sometimes. Yeah, go ahead. I just want to make a comment. Mr. Yoakum, I appreciate you sending the email to district as well as to the school board because it gave us an opportunity in full transparency to show why, why we are doing what we do. So thank you very much for that, and, um, and I appreciate the presentation. So I've, I've got a question, I guess, on the other side. So, so quantity, certainly it's there, right? So, and I see a lot of students are, are taking advantage of this. We're seeing a lot of course completions. What about the quality of instruction? Have we, look, have we looked at that? I mean, does this lead to successful results if there's an EOC in a course that a student is taking? Or um, I guess I just kind of go back to some of that pandemic time and what the, we, I mean, right? We as parents got to see what our kids were doing in online programs and I felt like some of it was left to be desired. Yeah, so I think as the IT guy, that's probably not something that I've delved into terribly much. However, the one thing I would kind of address for a second is, is that I don't know what the other mechanism would potentially look like in this mass of credit recovery. And the reason why I say that is, is that, you know, we, this offers a very deep, basically course catalog to a large extent, but we would not necessarily have a certified teacher to be able to have this coverage or this spread at every, every school. And so don't get me wrong, I think it's one of those things where that correlation would be interesting to some extent. I don't know what the other tool to repair the amount of damage that may have been done to students lacking credits would be. So I think that would be something we would look at. I will say this is that this is being used out of ESSER funding to fund again. I think we're evaluating and at the point this doesn't necessarily maybe make sense or is able to be downsized more. I think you will see it contract. We do run summer school through it, which I, 
Ms. Pearson can probably speak to. And right now, the reason why I went ahead and brought the renewal to you, because I thought it was pretty essential, is we did not want to get into a time where we were going to miss the payment for summer school, because middle school and high schools uh, depend on it because of the coverage, the certification issue. Yeah. And I think to answer your question too, Mr. Dodd, it is meant to be a support for intervention. And so in distance learning, yes, we had a lot of students that accessed some of this material and it kind of served as their core to get us through that last um, nine weeks when we had to shut down. But that is not its intention. So usually the students that are on this are students that have already been in front of a teacher. And so this is their second time seeing that content and getting the reinforcement. So it's very different from when we use it for the distance learning where some students may have struggled a little bit because it was their first round of accessing material without necessarily all the full support. So the way we use it in this way is very different than the distance learning model. I guess I just kind of, and I had never really given this, that much thought to this until it was brought up, but it, you know, it's interesting, I guess, as we look at, let's say, math or ELA or social studies, you know, any, any of these subjects, we, we go through an extensive textbook adoption process, right, where we review other materials and the teachers then go out and look at this and vote on it and then we send one out for public review and so on and so forth. But here we've got, um, 2,500 courses that were taken through this program, we have no idea what's in there for content. And there, there are other options available on the state approved list that haven't been vetted against, against this. So There's, is this the best option? I don't know. So I kind of do probably have a little bit of feedback on that. And the fact that in our research, one of the things that we found is 50 out of the 67 districts use it, including almost every district surrounding us. So don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that that's necessarily the answer to like a correlation type question, yeah. but we're in the boat with a lot of folks, including Orange. Marion actually used their competitor and they're actually going to Edgenuity this year. So the momentum does seem to be on their side for an adoption. I think this is the first year we've used it like this. So when these assessment scores come back, it's definitely something we can look at. We don't have that data. The, Really, we don't really have that data uh, terribly much from this year because I think this is the first massive credit recovery push. So, so if you're a parent and you want to take a look at the curriculum or the content of this, is, is that possible? I mean, is this considered an instructional material that somebody could review and look at? I mean, I guess now, based on some of the information that we've seen come out of the state regarding the math books and some examples that have come out there, we have no idea if there's CRT or SEL and any of that stuff. I, what does is, that look like? How do you find that out? It is state approved. like. For the credit but, recovery, but because they, they have but the question will be whatever review process they went through in math, I would imagine they'd be subjecting that this type of resource to as well. Eventually, yeah. But this I has think. not gone through that kind of extensive review. No, yet. I think the first, I think the tip of the spear was basically the it's math. It's not, it's not an adopted material. Right. It's used for intervention. So our core materials are adopted. Right. I, I just, right. I get that. I just think it's kind of funny that you're. We've got twenty five hundred courses that were done here. I have no idea what the content is. Neither does the parent. The teachers in our school district probably don't know unless they've clicked through every single module, which they probably haven't. It's just a lot of unknowns in this, in terms of content, right? It is standards based and standards aligned. So it would be aligned to the standards that the students have to have to be able to uh, master the content of the program. But that's what but every math book publisher said too. I, right? I hear what you say. I'm trying to answer you. Sure, no, I understand. To, um, the qualifications of the program to be approved by the state. So it is standards based and standard aligned. It would not be a, a substitute that we could use to provide a credit if we did not have that approval from the state with regard to it. Okay. So content, yes, I think eventually programs like that will probably be as well open up for review. Yeah, for content. So I just have no idea what the kids are reading about. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, board? No. Thank you very much, both of you, for being available. Thanks for your questions. So, Superintendent, do you have a recommendation? I do. I recommend the approval of 8.05 renewal of Edgenuity. So moved. Second. Is there any further discussion, board? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. Thank you. So, we don't have any discussion other than that piece tonight. So, we are on the superintendent's report. All right. Just a few updates and reminders. Um, Monday, May 2nd. That is this coming Monday, starting at 5.30. Actually, it starts at 6, but the doors open at 5.30. If you have not seen our Incubator EDU program, um, I know some of you have been a part of that, and I think done, I actually, I think Mr. Mathias actually sat through some presentations, and um, but this is an opportunity for our students to compete in a Shark Tank-like event. So these students have um, created um, some, some new, um, 
I guess you would call them inventions and discoveries that, um, that they have to address real world problems. And they'll pre be presenting these business ideas to successful business leaders in our community for a chance to win cash prizes. Um, potential investors will also be present and could offer to buy into one of the new ventures. So if you want to see some incredible thinking and presentations by our students, that's Monday night, um, May 2nd. You come, might be something you want to invest in. Where is it? It is at Tavares High School, uh, May 2nd. Monday, 5.30 to 8. Okay. Um, also, this Wednesday is our Alumni Hall of Fame luncheon. So I think you have that on your calendar. Um, it is sponsored by the Education Foundation. I want to thank them for being such a great partner in this endeavor. And, and congratulations to our inductees. Um, if you saw Super Sunday recently, we highlighted our four inductees. And, um, and that was, I think, last, last Sunday. And also... Uh, remember that Teacher Pre Appreciation Week kicks off on Monday as well, May 2nd. So it's a great opportunity to celebrate all of our teachers and to let them know how thankful we are for the great job that they do for our children every day. Also, um, since our last meeting, we learned that Stacia Warner, Assistant Principal at Beverly Shores Elementary, is one of three finalists for the 2022 Florida Assistant Principal of the Year Award. So congratulations to her. Very, very proud of her. Um, and then... I had two letters of condolence. Um, first of all, letters were sent to um, the father, uh, or Ken Lyford, who's our mental health specialist, and mother-in-law of Melissa Lyford, director of ESC. Um, Ken's father, Joe Lyford, passed away. And then Ryan Gibbons is a teacher at Eustis Middle School, and he lost his father, John, to die to today. I'm to not die. sure how to pronounce that. <laughs> I'm sorry about, I'm sure I didn't say that one correctly. And then lastly, I too, Denko kind of kicked us off tonight. It is Dr. Burns' last meeting with us. And I just want you to know how grateful I am and honored to have worked alongside you these past several years. We've been through some, some interesting times together and some challenges for sure. And um, you will be missed. Your leadership will be missed. And we just have a small token of our appreciation that I want to give to you. Can you get that? To the best of luck, it's heavy, so hold up on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> higher quality bags. <laughs> we wish you all the best, and again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent. Mr. Matthias? Just a couple of things, because tonight actually is Dr. Burns' night. So I want to. I just want to mention a, a tradition that you had started with Donuts, Dads, and Me. Mm -hmm. Donuts, Dads, Mentors, and Me <laughs> uh, was held at Beverly Shores. Matthias Food Service had sponsored that. They had 387 wow. um, dads and their kids show up. It was amazing. The administrator did it in off the, off the charts, um, um, putting it together and the way it was orchestrated. So everyone at Beverly Shores should be proud, and everyone I know enjoyed it, and that's to your credit, something that you started. So now that I want to switch personally, Dr. Burns, we have, we've had a few years together. <laughs> and what I honestly can say is that Dr. Burns has always from her heart voted, always from her heart advocated, and for that, I am grateful. So uh, I wish you all the best. That's it. Thank you. Mrs. Cunningham? Well, I just want to compliment the students from Umatilla Middle. Uh, you did an excellent job in your presentation, and we're very happy, and I think I can say we'd be very happy to support your endeavors. Also, along Mental Health Month, I had the pleasure of being at Tavares High School, I believe it was last week, uh, and they recognized their ambassadors for mental health, and that was a wonderful celebration that was put on by the school district in conjunction with the sponsors. And certainly, Dr. Burns. Um, my time with you has been limited, um, but what I can say to you is I actually remember you as a cheerleader in high school, so I have a long history, <laughs> and, I, and I have yearbooks and pictures. Um, but what I would say to you is the thing, <laughs> the thing that I admire and respect a lot about you is that you're always true to yourself, you're true to your convictions, and I think that's very important. I think especially uh, in the times we live in with the political things that we face, it's always good at the end of the day to be able to go home and believe in what you did. So I congratulate you on terms well done. Uh, we will miss you, but certainly it is with much respect that we bid you goodbye. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Cunningham. I was actually gonna let you go last. Okay. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Dodd. You're taking notes. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Mr. Dodd. Yes, uh, uh, two things. So uh, the first was, um, actually, I was kind of uh, reminiscing about a conversation we had around the dinner table last night when Mr. Yoakum was talking about reviews and things of the sort. And uh, and so um, I, I can tell you, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll ask uh, Siri uh, to give me directions to a school to give me a good ETA. And uh, when you do directions by Siri, she'll always tell you how many stars that business has. And, and you know, you can always tell if a student was suspended from that school because that school that school has one star on Yelp, <laughs> you know, and that was probably some angry student who had uh, not liked um, some some sequences. So I guess you can't put all your faith in, in the reviews. But but anyway, uh, I digress. The uh, so so my kids were asking to have a review system for my cooking, and I thought, okay, <laughs> is it really that bad? And they're like, no, 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 no. This it, it's. It, the problem is that you get so many differing opinions. Five kids, I can't please them all. I was like, okay, so so you take a meal, four kids will love it, one kid won't. Well, what does that do to my rating? <laughs> you know, I feel like I'll never get an accurate rating on this. So, no, the review system is no good. And they said, well, could, you think we could do that for school lunches? And I go, well, well, I guess once again, you'll you'll end up with, with some reviews all over the board. But I, I almost recalled, I thought, when we had implemented that, that new menu system or software that it had their uh, ability to, for students to rate the, the, the meals. Does this sound familiar at all? Kind of. I felt like we, I felt like we had that component. And I wondered if we, if we, if we then started you know, gathering that sort of data, if students would then start to kind of drive the demand for what does our menu look like for the month? You know, we, so we'd see, oh, these, these five dishes are the most popular. We should make sure that those are in you know, the greatest rotation. These two are never <laughs> going to be past the, half a star, so so let's cut those from the list. Yeah, I I don't know. I thought maybe it might kind of kind of drive some of that. And um, yeah, all right, thanks. You thought I said you know to a kid, I was like, you could you can make a million bucks right here. You know, you could start your own Facebook of school lunches. <laughs> you know, and the kids scan a Q, QR code and go anyway. It'd be better if we if we controlled it. <laughs> um, and, and uh, so, so that was one topic. The other one was, I know that, um, I don't know if the rest of you have been getting as many questions as I have about uh, the, seeing the news from the state on math textbooks and things of the sort. Um, but uh, I think you and I had talked about maybe the possibility of sharing where we are in the yeah. district. Or... Talk about where to get the setup for the Oh, perfect. That's, that's good. Well timed. Thank you. All right, yes, I'm sure you all have heard about the state releasing the adoption list for the math instructional materials bid. So um, just a little background on that. Once that list is released, publishers have 21 days to appeal that decision um, to be included on the list. And that's typical, it has happened um, every, every year. Unfortunately, the state releases that list after April 1st, which is often after the districts have gone through that process, and that's been the same each year as well. So in our process after adoption, we're in that 30-day period after the board approval, um, allowing the public additional time after you say, yes, this is the adopt book we're going to adopt, before we're able to purchase, and that closes April 28th for us. So where we are with our books that did not make the list at this point, um, we're in constant communication with the publishers, and they all have assured us that they're going forth with that appeal process. So that um, that means they get the details from the reviewers uh, and what needs to be submitted in order for them to be included on that list. And they are committed to doing that. And I think some have even gone all the way through it and submitted that documentation and are back waiting from the state again on that. So they're updating us regularly, keeping us informed of where they are in the process. In the meantime, we are working on contingency plans. My team is meeting and planning forth. We're collaborating with other districts to see what their options are and what they're hearing from, their, um, from the publishers as well. And then we are kind of trying to think through every scenario and what we might need to do when we get to that time frame. I want to remind you that we kind of, we're a little ahead of the game this year from where we've been in some years past. Most of our core consumable orders have already been placed and our shipments should be starting soon to the schools um, for the ones that are just a repurchase for the year with the exception of K-5, um, ELA, and Spanish consumables that we're still working on. Other than that, those have already been placed in and are in process to be delivered. Um, so that, makes, that gives us a little time to stop and remember that this is a five-year adoption. So we want to we want to take all this information and we want to make sure that we are making a decision that's right for our students and our teachers um, in Lake and make sure that we have the materials that they need um, in order to be successful. So that's kind of where we are. I don't know if you have any questions about that. If anybody does. No, I'd just like to thank you for the hard work of you and your staff. Thank I know you. that's a lot. And 
So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Scottcraft. Is that it for you? And uh, I thought I know. I know when you had announced your impending resignation, I had uh, some initial thoughts that night and just thanking you for your, your service. And I thought, wow, what a great perspective you have been with this board. And and you know what? That's one of the benefits of this board is the diversity of opinions. You know, we all come from different walks of life and bring a different strength to the table. And I think this is a board that is is, is great because because of that. And you've been a part of, of making that greatness, and so I'm glad that this is a go. Thank but, uh, you. Wish you the best. And hopefully, uh, I'm not on Facebook all that often, but maybe you'll post an update from now on. <laughs> Occasionally. We, we can check in and, and see how you're doing. Yeah. And uh, all the crazy cats you might be fostering or raising. or Kids want to move on to dogs. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a much better choice. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Dodd. Um, I also wanted to just thank um, Mrs. Sheckler and the SWAT students from Missoula Middle School for being here this evening. Like I mentioned before, we just love it when you guys are here. We know that the work they're doing is very important. Um, I think that vaping is probably one of the biggest concerns that we have among adolescents and teenagers today. And so the work is, is well worth it. And you definitely have our support to continue advocacy for, for change in that arena. So thank you for being here. I think it was a great introduction to our Mental Health Awareness Month. I think the county is doing some amazing things in that work. And it was really nice to highlight you as, a, as an example of some of the things that are happening. So thank you for making the trip out here. I know the, the group is much bigger, but as you pointed out, they can't drive yet. So they're kind of at the mercy <laughs> of their parents. So thank you guys for bringing them here tonight. We really appreciate having them. Um, I'd love an update next year because you've set some pretty good goals. So we'd like to see you back in that regard as well. Um, I also wanted to make this night about Dr. Burns, but I can't um, not thank Mr. Carr and his staff, the Eustace High School uh, softball team had their opening night on the new ball field and it is amazing the ball field is just it's it's a great place to be the parking is no longer an issue at all there's no angry neighbors anywhere um, the bathrooms work there was no flood there were so many things that were amazing <laughs> that evening um, the the band came to support the girls the next game and played throughout the entire game I didn't get to go but my mother was texting me pictures all night and videos of the band that was there to support the girls and it's just going to be a great place uh, we host districts next week so so Wednesday night and Friday night, five and seven o'clock, you'll be able to come and see some district ball. And I'm going to just make a prediction that you might see these ladies here again with the state championship. So if you want to see some good ball, come see some good ball being played. And I'm going to let you finish the night, but not before I just, I mean, I don't think I can say anything that they haven't said. My feelings are exactly the same. I've really enjoyed serving with you. I'm excited to see the next advocacy route that you take, <laughs> Dr. Burns, because we all know how powerful your leadership can be. And so we appreciate your time on this board. And, and I, I'm going to say this with Cunningham said beautifully is that you, you definitely have been true to yourself. And we appreciate that. That's not everybody can say that that serves in a government position. So we respect and, and appreciate your leadership. So if you want to close it, when you're finished, I'll hit the gavel. And okay. um, it was kind of hard coming up with something to <laughs> say. So I kind of thought of doing a where have we been? Where do I start? And I did want to bring up um, this was a funny year for me because my when we came back here to live, my eldest was in third, and now my twins are in third. And um, I, and when we started, we started with recess. <laughs> and so I thought I would just start with that. And working that, like we worked for two years, and the first year I was on the board, we were finishing the recess um, law. And I've been able to see how that recess law is, it changes those children's lives. And it, it has a personally affected my son, not so much my, we have a twin girl and a twin boy, but that active boy will tell you that like he needs recess so bad. He'll, if, if there's not a recess day, he comes home and says they took all the fun out of school. And, um, and, and so it taught me the importance of that advocacy work and it, and that changing that law really did make a difference for our children. And I wanted to point out also, um, in the first year we began and when i first came we we got um the lobbyist and we started our cte programs at leesburg high and those programs with the help of every single one of you have been built out so much through this county that we have programs at every single high school now um i think at one point we had them because my dad was a vocational teacher back in the day but we brought so many vocational programs back and i'm very proud of that work that the board did um and then finally, I wanted to mention the work that this board worked very hard for very many years to stabilize the budget and to make sure all of our reserves were ready so that we could build and we could have new schools in the south end and hopefully more uh, improvements in the north end. And I think that that work was really um, 
really important and it really took a lot of unity from every single one of us to have the discipline to hold steady on that decision and where you build and what you do in the future is like I'll look forward to looking forward to that. Um, I wanted to thank Bill. Uh, personally, you uh, always have reminded me of my dad. I think you meant, I know, I know you know my dad. Yes. Um, <laughs> and I know how much you two love great deals. And I, I do love <laughs> how you go after those deals and get them. And um, well, we have a long history with your family too, but I think the depth of experience that you bring to this board has been helpful and the history that you can bring is so, it's remarkable. And I think that you've been a very valuable addition to the board. Um, Mark, I've always been impressed at how hard you work. <laughs> And how how you always do your homework, um, and and I notice because I do it too, <laughs> and um, and I I'm always very impressed by that, and that you're always there for your constituents. And Stephanie, I think your leadership this year has blossomed, and I think that you've really brought the board together this year. And 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 I thought I think that your leadership. Um, and your style of leadership is very colloquial, and um, I, I just I think you I think you're doing a lovely job. <laughs> so, uh, I guess that's all I had to say. I really wanted to thank my constituents, and I wanted to thank all of my supporters and um, all of the staff and the superintendent. Um, so, thank you very much, and it's been a wonderful ride. So, I was told to remind you guys we have a workshop at nine thirty on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>